The St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative presents the Damascene Podcast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In studying the sacred scriptures, we ought always to be mindful of the admonition of St. Peter in his second Catholic epistle. He says, quote, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. To properly interpret the scriptures, we must look to the Church, especially to the writings of the Holy Fathers. Insofar as the Church Fathers experienced the same grace of the Holy Spirit that spake by the prophets and descended on the Holy Apostles at Pentecost, they are able to properly interpret the words of the prophets and the apostles. In approaching the study and use of the Psalter, then, we are in need of patristic commentary. Of course, there are quite a few of these commentaries. For now, I have decided to read St. Athanasius the Great's letter to Marcellinus. It is of a manageable length, and therefore lends itself to reading by busy adults. More than this, though, it provides an overview of the Psalter in general, and an important introduction to the spiritual sense of the Psalms. For after all, we do not want to merely study the Psalms, but to develop a sense of how to use them in our regular lives, to help us improve as Orthodox Christians, to have them serve as the spiritual foundation for our prayer life. With this in mind, let's have a look at the first several sections of the letter. It would appear that Marcellinus was a deacon of the Church of Alexandria. He was suffering from an illness that kept him bedridden for some time. Yet despite his illness, Marcellinus had committed to making a thorough study of the Psalms. Upon learning of this, St. Athanasius begins his letter. He says, I marvel at your conduct in Christ, dear Marcellinus. Indeed, you are successfully enduring the present trial, although you have suffered many tribulations in it, and you do not neglect the discipline. For when I inquired from your letter-bearer how you fare in your continuing illness, I learned that you maintain I learned that you maintain a studious attitude toward all the Holy Scripture, that you read most frequently the book of Psalms, and strive to comprehend the meaning contained in each psalm. End quote. With St. Athanasius' first words, we too may begin to learn how to suffer. That is, how to suffer as Christians. For the great Athanasius, the Archbishop of Alexandria, the man who was against the whole world and striving against Arius, marvels, he marvels at Marcellinus, Marcellinus's conduct. And why does he marvel? Marcellinus is successfully enduring his child, his trial. He does not neglect the discipline. For after all, we are all called to pick up our cross on a daily basis. Even in the midst of his struggles, Marcellinus continues to pray, to study all of the sacred scriptures. Lying in bed, one presumes in at least some pain In a time when Advil, Tylenol, or aspirin is not to be had, Marcellinus persists in prayer and study, concentrating especially on the Holy Psalter. And so Athanasius marvels. He rejoices at his conduct. He wishes to help him in his project. Thus he continues, On the basis of this, then, I commend you, since I too have a great fondness for the same book, just as I have for all the Scripture. Indeed, it so happens that I had a conversation with a learned old man, and I wish to write you those things that old, that old master of the Psalter told me about it. For there is a certain grace and persuasiveness combined with the reasonable statement. End quote. Having found a kindred spirit, the saint prepares to hand down what he also has received. We recall in the gospel the words of our Savior to the apostles, Freely have ye received, freely give. Matthew 10.8 As a successor to the apostles, St. Athanasius gives to Marcellinus what he had received freely, and through his letter he gives it to us as well. Before we close for now, notice that last line, when he says, For there is a certain grace and persuasiveness combined with the reasonable statement. True scriptural study, true patristic study, is not merely or even primarily academic. That is, it is not simply reasonable in a logical sense. To be sure, that is there, at least on some level. True study, though, has grace. And through true study, we find grace. 
For if what we study is truly orthodox, it will be imbued with the spirit of the Gospels. For we read in Matthew regarding our Savior that he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Matthew 7.29 So let's sum up what we have learned in the, uh, in, for today, or I should say in this recording. 1. In approaching the study of the sacred scriptures, we must always have recourse to the apostolic tradition. This is found especially in the writings of the Church Fathers. 2. In approaching the study of the Psalter, we do not want to study the Psalms in a merely intellectual way. We need to learn how to make it, it, the Psalter, a part of our daily life. And 3. To begin to do 1 and 2, we will turn to St. Athanasius the Great's letter to Marcellinus. 4. If Marcellinus could make such a thorough study of the Psalter and sacred scriptures while very er ill, Certainly, we too ought to be able to acquire the habit of regular study of the Psalter, to regularly use it in our prayers, even if we only get little moments to do so. May God, through the prayers of St. Athanasius the Great, establish us in this struggle to study and pray using the Holy Psalter. Amen.